wake up in the morning. The Lego Movie 2, the second part. Undeniably, the first Lego Movie is one of the most influential animated features of the decade. Not only by launching the careers of Phil Lord and Chris Miller to become acclaimed filmmakers, but also putting Warner Brothers back as serious animation competitors and being an inspiration for many animated films to come, either for better or for worse. But regardless, it does have the legacy of a milestone movie. As for my thoughts on the original film itself, while I would hesitate to call it one of the best animated features ever, like how some would highly praise it, but I do agree that it is a really good film that is a lot of fun and captures the spirit of being a kid playing with Legos, on top of some of the most creative use of animation in recent years. In a way, it managed to do what many people once considered impossible by taking an absurdly abstract concept and not only succeed in making it, but making it very well without entirely feeling like a 90 minute commercial. So now that Warner Animation Group bought us the second set of the Lego Movie, is it still cool to be a part of the team, or is everything not as awesome as it used to be? Let's find out. The Story When the first movie came out, it gave audiences a mind-blowing sensation that can later be described as often imitated but never duplicated. Unfortunately, the sequel proved that not even the LEGO Movie itself could recreate that unique sense of originality that it presented the first time. Now, before I continue, I just want to give you a warning that in order for me to discuss about the sequel, I'd have to bring up some spoilers from the first film. Don't worry, I won't spoil anything from the sequel, but in case you have yet to see the original LEGO Movie, then maybe this review is not for you, but thanks for coming anyways. Back onto the LEGO Movie 2, the biggest thing that it lacks from its predecessor is any of the surprises. We know going in that this whole LEGO world and the story that goes into it is in some kid's imagination, making it easy to decipher what the characters mean when they're either going into the Sistar system or dreading the Armageddon. It was a huge twist in the first movie to ultimately make sense of everything, but now that the secret is unveiled, it's hard to move forward and have audiences invested the same way now that they know how the world of the LEGO Movie works. As a result, it makes the film easily predictable, knowing how the outcome would be right when the characters take their first steps. However, that doesn't mean it wouldn't try to surprise its viewers. There's no need to fight anymore. See? Friends. Ooh. <laughs> Around the third act, there would be this big twist that would completely change the plot's direction, but it might have made things worse for the feature. Not only was this twist mostly predictable, but it also made the whole movie entirely confusing and really messing up how everything functions to the point that now little makes actual sense, even within its own world. In fact, remember that scene at the end of the first when Emmett is moving around by himself next to Will Ferrell? Well, in the sequel, that moment is now a lot bigger and much more illogical. But despite its predictability and ruining its own concepts, there are a few components that do work to make it feel like a successor to the LEGO Movie. For one, the feature would deliver a huge set of jokes and shooting them out at every second. While I can't say that this is one of the funniest animated films, the gags are decent and capable of giving out some chuckles along the way. Also, as promised at the end of the first one, the heart of this film would be about playing with your siblings, where rejecting others to join on your imaginative journey can be more destructive for everyone. In a way, the story has the core of what made the LEGO Movie memorable, but not the quality to support it. The Animation what could debatably be the most praised and innovative element of the first LEGO Movie is the animation and the way it brought the LEGOs to life that no other movie had done before. Thankfully, unlike the script, the visuals are what this film successfully recreated the most from its predecessor, and even going beyond that. Like before, most everything that's on screen is made entirely out of LEGOs, from the world that they're set in, to the characters that inhabit them, to even the effects that show fire, water, shattered glass, lasers, and more. 
The effect also helps when there would be small details added to the film to look like it's literally made out of toys, where every brick and every figurine feel like they're built out of plastic. As for their movements, admittedly, it even fooled me in the first thinking that some actual stop motion might have been involved. But nope, it was all CGI where the animators only work within the LEGO's limitations and put the speed of the frames a little low to bring out the illusion like this was crafted like a stop motion film where the puppets are LEGOs. Add in the other parts like a vibrant color palette and some fast paced action to make the scenes intense and at least we could say that the movie is visually like the first film. <laughs> But it wouldn't just end there. The feature also found a way to add more into what is already crafted so well. The most noticeably unique addition is the difference between the imagination of the brother and sister, where the guy is more apocalyptic and has an edgy mood that wants to put emphasis on being tough and brooding, while the girl is a lot more sweet, colorful, and would even incorporate other materials like paper and glitter to present her world. Also, as a nice touch, some of the characters in the Sistar system would actually be LEGO Friends figurines to show how Sistar is a world made to be targeted for girls. If there's at least one good reason to come back to the LEGO movie world, it's to experience the great animation all over again. The Characters With a whole world of LEGOs, the many inhabitants in there have returned as well. The only catch though is that, while on the surface they are a lot of fun, there isn't a lot about the gang when you want to know them. Let's begin with the special himself, Emmett. I don't know about you guys, but for me, Emmett was the weakest element of the first movie. Not only a prime example of the bland archetype of a nobody becoming a somebody, but the only thing he brought to the film was his one-dimensional naive nature. In the second film, he did slightly improve as a character with an arc where he has to learn how to become more tough and hardened so that he could fit in his new apocalyptic surroundings and have the right attitude to save his friends. Speaking of which, his buddies Unikitty, Metalbeard, and Benny would all be taken to the Sistar system and experience what kind of world it is compared to their old home in their own unique way. They don't add into the movie further than that. Other than Batman, of course, being the prominent satire of the Cape Crusader. As for Wildstyle, or now that we know her as Lucy, it's like the movie wants to expand her character by building up that she has this secret past that she's trying to avoid, but it turns out that all the buildup was just for the sake of a gag at the end of the film, making her development feel nearly pointless. As for the new characters, it will be tough to describe them without going into spoiler territory, but I will do my best. There's Queen Whatever Wanabi, who is the ruler of the Sistar system and ordered her general Sweet Mayhem to bring Emmett's friends to her world. What makes her stand out is the way she constantly shapeshifts herself whenever she moves and bring out a few surprise musical numbers, even if this is not a musical. Out of curiosity, why wouldn't you want to marry me? Just, you know, again, purely for curiosity sake. Oh, I don't go for guys like you. What do you mean guys like me? Oh, great. Then there is Rex Danger Vest, an obvious satire on the roles that Chris Pratt would usually play that would aid Emmett in becoming the tougher man he was looking to be. Add in some well-placed cameo pop culture references to help brighten the mood with the LEGO's signature humor, and you got a cast of characters that do bring in some fun to the flick, but nothing more of substance outside of that. Thinking about it now, making something that would even get to the level of the original is a rather impossible task. Yet this did not completely fail on its own either. The LEGO Movie 2, the second part, may not be in the ranks of either the first film or the LEGO Batman movie, but it did come out as a good sequel and not like something that wants to rip itself off like the LEGO Ninjago movie. It is clearly weaker by delivering a predictable story that would end up messing up its own concepts and characters that are fun but nothing more complex outside of that, but it does stay true to the spirit of the LEGO movie with a good heart, enjoyable humor, and the great animation that people have come to love. 
If you're a major fan of the original LEGO Movie, you'll still get a good kick out of it, but I recommend lowering a bit of your expectations. Like, come in thinking you're in for something good instead of great. As for everyone else, I'd say this is an okay watch for something fun. If you want a quick laugh and have some nice visuals on your screen, then this is a nice choice. I can't say that everything is as awesome as it was before, but I would say rather that everything is now decent.